Dear friends, till now we have discussed about the factors which can affect the rate of uh, friction. Now I am going to be explain does friction produces heat. Next few reduction methods in order to reduce the friction let me know. So first, does friction produces heat in the sense, let me take few examples. So what we have to do means, we need to rub our two palms against each other for few minutes. What do you feel after rubbing your palms against each other? In second instance, we need to take matchstick along with a match box we need to rub match stick surface against the rough surface of match box from these two instances what we can observe let me explain from these two examples we can observe one thing when does palms are being rubbed against each other the surface of the palms are going to increase their temperature. In same way, when that map stick is being rubbed against the rough surface of match box, the surface of the both are going to be increase their temperature. Within the increase in the temperature, the map sticks got fired. So from this, we can conclude friction is going to be produced heat. Okay, dear friends, my next topic, reduction methods of friction. Already dear friends, we got learned in our previous session some advantages, some disadvantages. So, in order to minimize the disadvantages of frictional force, must we need to be adopt few techniques. Let me give you a few examples. I am going to ask a question. Why the sole of your shoes are being grooved? You know the reason behind of it? If it wasn't grooved while we are walking on a smooth surface, we may slip. So in order to reduce the friction while we are walking on the surface of a smooth, must our shoes, the soles of our shoes are being grooved. In same manner, cars, bulldozers, different vehicles, tiles are being threaded. What would happen? Why we need to change the tiles? Once the threading wants out of the tiles of cars. If we didn't means, what is going to be happening? So, the threading of car tights once once out must we need to change it change them we are not going to change in the sense when does the car moving on the surface of the tar road due to less friction it may slip so dear students these are few reduction methods uh, we can observe in our daily life and as well as very important uh, reduction method I am going to be explain the process of lubrication. What does lubrication means? Let me explain. In automobiles or else in machines, we people know very well, my dear friends. Inside the machines, there are moving inner parts. So lubricants like. Oil grease lubricants like oil and grease are being applied in between the surface of 
moving inner pods of machines. Once we apply in between the moving parts of the machine, a thin layer is going to be formed. Because of the thin layer, these moving parts are not going to be directly rubbed against each other. In another words, what is going to be happen means that interlocking of irregularities are being that inter irregularities of uh, interlocking of irregularities are being reduced to the large extent. So the reduction in interlocking of irregularities can minimize the frictional force. That's why must we need to use oil and grease etc. as lubricants. The process of minimizing the reduction of flow, the, the, the reduction of frictional force by using lubricants we call lubrication. These are the techniques which are useful to redu reduce the frictional force. And one more let me give a simple example. While we are playing caroms, must we need to sprinkle the powder. Then only that uh, while we are striking a coin with striker, easily we can done. If we did not use any powder, the frictional force is going to be increase a large extent. That striker it won't move even after application of a uh, external force. So must we need to sprinkle the powder on the surface of board in order to reduce the friction. These are the techniques which we can use in order to reduce the, reduce the reduction of the methods of friction. Welcome to the physics class. In our previous class, we discussed the factor which can affect the rate of friction. First factor which can, which can affect the rate of friction is surface of an object. Second factor is weight of an object or else normal force. So, normal force increases in the sense automatically weight of an object have to be increased. So, both are same. Weight of an object or normal force which is acting on the object. Both also can affect the rate of friction. So, last but not least, area of contact of an object. So, is how does this area of contact of an object? I did not explain in my previous class. First two factors I was explained. So, let me explain today. How does the rate of friction is being independent of area of contact of an object? So, dear students, in order to explain the factor area of contact of an object, how does it is being independent to the rate of friction? Let me take a brick. So we need to take a brick. So we need to tie a string around the brick. After we need to place the brick over a surface of floor horizontal. So let me place the brick to which string is being tied around it. After that let me place the brick over a surface of the floor horizontally. After that, let me take a spring balance. Spring balance is a device which is useful to measure the applied force. So, now I am trying to pull this brick which is being placed horizontally along the surface of floor by, me, by using spring balance. Spring balance consists a spring inside in it. So when we pull this brick, what is going to be happen to that spring means it is going to be stretched. So when does we pull this brick which is being placed horizontally along this floor of floor of a surface, we can observe the string the spring inside the spring balance is going to be stretched. So it is going to change its length. The stretching of your spring balance is directly proportional to the applied force. So, applied force, capital F, which is directly proportional to the stretching. Stretching in the sense, 
extension of spring stretching of a spring is being perpendicular to perpendicular to the direction of the applied force so dear students when does we pull a brick by using a spring balance over that object in the sense brick two forces are being act let me draw free body diagram so free body diagram like this it would be so this is so over the brick in this direction applied force is acting then what we would expect the direction of frictional force lies opposite to the applied force means here two forces are being acting two forces are being acting on your brick one is towards the left side in the sense another one is towards the right side of the brick so now let me go this applied force this applied force which is using to pull the brick must be equal to the must be equal to the maximum limit of frictional force maximum limit of frictional force at an instant so in this case this applied force must be equal to the maximum limiting force of friction at an instant when just this brick starts its motion just before starting of a motion of the brick there will be a maximum limiting force which will be equal to the applied force in such a manner we can find out the magnitude of a frictional force so we need to note down by observing the scale of spring balance magnitude of frictional force let it be 20 newtons now in second case what we have to do in the sense we need to place the brick in this case not horizontally we need to place it along the vertical direction over a surface of the floor so what difference we have in between case 1 and case 2 means here object is being placed horizontally in second case that object is being placed vertical so we need to repeat the same steps which we done in our first process procedure or else experiment so from that we can find out the maximum limiting force which is equal to the applied force so in this case also we are going to get of 10 newtons after observing the scale of spring balance so what we can conclude dear students here when we pull the brick after keeping horizontally after pulling a brick by means of same spring balance same bricks but uh, the difference what we have means here the brick is being kept horizontally here in second case the brick is being kept uh, vertically so in both cases only small change we made both uh, so the bricks are being pulled with same type of spring balance and we observed the maximum limiting frictional force 10 newtons 10 newtons itself from this what we can understand means is a uh, that the frictional force the magnitude of frictional force remains same when we try to pull horizontal brick and vertical brick but uh, here yeah, one thing we have to be understand in case of when the brick is being kept horizontally that area of contact is a uh, very large here when object is being kept means brick is being kept vertically the area of contact is smaller so the difference is when we kept that brick horizontal horizontally along the direction of surface of floor the area of contact between these two surfaces should be very large as in second case that area of contact when it is being kept vertically is small so a one change is there here the contact area of an object is large here the contact area of object is small so but uh, even there is a change in area of contact of brick the required frictional force we got same only 10 newtons and 10 newtons from this what we can conclude means area of contact of an object is independent of the rate of friction
Dear friends, till now we discussed about the different types of frictions. The all different types of frictions offered by the solid surfaces mostly. Now I am going to be explaining people about another kind of friction which is known as fluid. Before learning about the fluid friction, let me introduce what does fluids means. You know, matter which exists in three states, solid, liquid, gases. Among these three states of matter, liquids and gases together we call fluids. So when does few objects moving through the liquids or gases, they offer resistance to the movement of the object. Such a type of resistance, the power of resistance is known as fluid friction. So dear students, let me explain this fluid friction with an example. You take a glass of water, by means of a stirrer, try to wheel the water. So when we rotate that spoon, which is known as stirrer, then what is going to be happen means that water comes, comes into whirling motion. That whirling motion of the water is going to be continuous until or unless we are going to be stop the rotation of stirrer, which is known as spoon. So once we start the rotation of the spoon, the whirling motion of water which is takes place around an axis is going to be gradually decreases. After a particular time, after certain amount of time, the top whirling motion of water comes to all, means it disappears. What could be the reason behind of it? The reason is fluid friction. The fluid friction is going to take place in between the surface of layer. Layers called liquid layer. In between the surface of liquid layer, which is being contact with the surface of the glass, fluid friction is going to be exist, which is responsible, which makes that whirling motion of the water to stop its motion. So this is nothing but known as fluid friction. Now let me explain factors which can affect the fluid friction. There are three factors. One is the speed of the object which is moving through the tub, fluids. So speed of an object also affect the rate of friction, the rate of fluid friction. Next nature of the fluid, nature of fluid also going to be nature of the fluid also going to be affect the rate of rate of fluid friction so speed of an object which is being moving through the top fluids also one of the factor it can affect the rate of friction and nature of the fluid itself also one of the factor which can affect the rate of fluid friction and as well as size of the object very important thing size of object which is being moving through the top fluids also plays uh, as an uh, important role in order to as, uh, change the rate of fluid friction these three are the factors dear friends in this lesson mostly i have covered all important topics according to the uh, annual examination so now let me give a worksheet many few questions i am going to give here Try to answer them. So first question is write the reaction reduction methods by process of lubrication. So what does lubrication means? How does the process of lubrication will be how to write? Define fluid friction along with an example you write. Next, how does area of contact is independent of friction of an object? Explain. You have to explain how can you say area of contact is independent of friction of an object how can you say you need to write so i hope you understand this friction very well thank you very much